Hi everyone, I'm Rachel Tessman from StampYourArtOut.com and today we have another live paper crafting class on Facebook. Right now I am recording this live so there might be some other people coming on live with me and I'll be reacting to their comments during the recording, um, but you may be watching this at a later time on my blog, on YouTube, on Facebook. Um, so just know that this is recorded live and that's why I'm interacting with other people during the actual broadcast. So yay! I'm so excited to get started. I have a fun card to show you. We're going to be making this um, peekaboo gatefold card and it's called a peekaboo gatefold card because it's a gatefold. So let me just open this up here. It, it folds like a gate, like a door. Um, but it also has like a little area where you can see inside. So that's why we call it the peekaboo gatefold card and it has a little bow closure. So we're going to show you the little trick of getting a bow on there and you want to use a sturdy ribbon because that will help hold it. Hey, Diana's with us and Tammy's with us. Hi, you guys. Thanks for joining in live. And it looks like Sandy and Kim are with us. Yay. All right. We have a group already. We have a class. We can get started. Um, I am going to be using the Tutti Fruity designer paper. It's from the Occasions catalog. It is retiring. I'm also going to be using the Fruit Basket stamp set. Uh, so um, just know that I'm using retiring products. And you'll want to keep that in mind that if there's anything that you want to get, you probably want to nab it up in an order soon. Um, because things are disappearing off that retiring list and we'll talk about that towards the end too. Diana's with us. Thanks for sharing Diana. Um, if you do share this broadcast, there's a share button I think somewhere, right? <laughs> if you share this broadcast and you mention in a comment that you're sharing it, um, that really helps too because um, then you get entered into a prize drawing at the end. We're gonna have a couple fun prizes. And of course, I always give away a card as one of the prizes. So that's actually like one of the most popular things for some reason, <laughs> which is great. Everyone picks the card, yay. Um, and thanks, Deb, I'm glad that you like this card. Uh, let me show you a few other versions. So we'll, we'll start and I'll, what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna bring you down um, so you can see my desktop and you can see me working. And then I'll share the measurements after I share the supplies because sometimes I think that confuses people when they don't see it all first. So we're gonna do that first. Let me see if I can get you down onto the desktop here. And we're gonna do um, a little picture in picture, which is always fun. There. <laughs> and um, here, we'll just uh, do this too. There we go. Okay, so let me show you some of the actual products that we're gonna be using, okay? Again, the stamp set is called Fruit Basket, and it's a fun one. Um, it's got some cute little uh, fruit pieces in it that you can build up and, and create watermelons and strawberries and pears and pineapples, some fun little sayings that go with it. This is in our occasions catalog. It is retiring. That means it won't be available anymore. It does have some fun products that go with it that I'm not actually going to use today, but these fun punches, these little tiny punches, after you stamp the image, you can then punch it out and add it to your card. That's kind of fun. There's also some washi tape, which I am gonna integrate into a card. And then of course the designer paper, and I have been using up the designer paper, so I can't even show you the fun little stack of um, different images in it, but you can look online at the Tutti Fruity designer paper if you want to um, get an idea of what that's like. We're also gonna bring in, first of all, um, a color called Night of Navy. This is not retiring, by the way, but our stamp pads are changing up. So if you like this style stamp pad, you'll want to grab them up now. I really like the new ones, so I'm going to buy them all when they, when they are available. <laughs> and then we're also going to use a couple other pads on the second card, because I'm actually going to do two different cards. The punches that we'll be using will be my worn out. It's not really worn out, but it's just worn off. Um, my two inch, can you read that? It's a two inch circle punch, and then this is the two and a quarter inch circle punch. So we're using those two punches. And of course, our paper snips, and I always assign one to be my ribbon scissors. Uh, that way I don't make my, 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 my scissors go dull by cutting paper with it all the time. This one's always sharp because I never cut paper with it. So this is good for ribbon, and then I've got one just for my paper. I'm gonna use my snail adhesive my glue dots, that will help with the ribbon. This card definitely needs a bone folder so that you can get those creases nice and crisp. And then of course we need the trimmer. Now, what are the consumables? The consumable products that we're gonna be using for this one will be coordinating cardstock. So Night of Navy cardstock. 
I've already cut this and scored this one, but I'm gonna demonstrate doing that for those of you who may be new to paper crafting. And then we'll use some Whisper White. We'll use some designer paper from the Tutti Frutti pack. I love this one. Strawberries, I'm a berry girl. I have a berry boy and I have a, a water, uh, not a berry, I have a berry boy and I have a melon boy. Um, one of them really loves melons a lot and the other one really likes berries. So I'm also the berry girl in the family. <laughs> and then we'll be using um, some ribbon. Sorry, we have also a scrap of that. We're gonna be using some ribbon and this is retiring but the color isn't. So garden green will stay but the ribbons change out frequently also. So they change out like every year we get different, um, different textures, different styles of ribbons. So this one is our satin stitched ribbon in the garden green. So now I'm gonna switch you to the computer so that you can see the measurements. Hi everyone, it's so fun to have everyone check in. This is awesome. Oh, let's get that little thing off of there. There we go. So now you can see the, the measurements for um, the pieces that we'll be using. And again, I, I'm gonna show you different styles. So you don't necessarily need to associate um, like the base cardstock is what I wrote down instead of just specifically Knight of Navy. For the sample that I'm first gonna demonstrate though, I am gonna use the ones that are in parentheses, but then I have, again, like I said, other samples. So the base cardstock is gonna be five and a half by seven and three quarters. And the reason why it's seven and three quarters instead of eight and a half is because we're making that little peekaboo area. So I'll show that when I actually cut it for you because I'm gonna demonstrate that. And then we're gonna score it at one and three quarters on each end. Um, oh, I, <laughs> I should have written on the other end. Okay, so I, I left that off, sorry. Scrap for punching out the two and a quarter inch circle. Um, and then the inside layer that we're gonna be using is um, Whisper White. <coughs> excuse me, five and a quarter by four. The designer paper, two strips that are one and a half by five and three quarters. And then the embellishment um, paper, which is gonna be on that actual circle. Um, we're gonna use a scrap of the Tutti Frutti for the first card for the two inch circle punch. Some ribbon that's about eight to nine inches. And then these are the other supplies that I'm using for that Knight of Navy card. So go ahead and take a screenshot of that real quick in five. Four, three, two, one. Okay, whoops, hang on. I guess not one, hang on. <laughs> All right, we are putting picture back in picture and there we go. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with cutting that base card stock. Um, Arlene, what did you write there? I'm reading comments and I'm not sure what that means. <laughs> I was a math girl and a science girl in school, so you're giving me a vocabulary word that I don't understand. <laughs> Unless you wrote something incorrectly, but anyways. Yeah, the ribbon, satin stitch ribbon is awesome, isn't it, Cecilia? Okay, here we go. So, five and a half by eight and a half is what we'll start out with. So this is 11 inches, this is eight and a half. We're gonna cut our cardstock in half at the five and a half inch mark here. And we'll move that out of the way. You can actually get two cards out of one piece of cardstock. And this is the one that we want to trim down because we need to have a peekaboo part. So you actually have to trim off the excess before you do this scoring. So we're gonna cut at seven and three quarters. Normally it's eight and a half inches long, but we want to have a three quarter inch little window in there, okay? So we're putting it at the seven and three quarter inch mark and we're slicing. And now we can come in and score at either end and we're gonna score at one and three quarters on this end. We flip it around and score it at one and three quarters on this end. You guys need to let me know, by the way, if you think having the supplies shared first and then the actual measurement thing off my computer is helpful or if it doesn't matter. I'd really like to know that. Okay, here we go. So now we're gonna, score, uh, we're gonna crease our, our score lines and that, that's the bone folder tool. That just helps make them nice and crisp. Hopefully I'm doing this in the window so you can see it. Every once in a while I have to look up at my camera so I can see it, what you guys are seeing. And uh, you just uh, shout out if you don't understand something, okay? So here we go. I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit here. I don't know if we can do that on, oh yeah, we can, there. Okay, <laughs> so there is um, the base of our card. Then we bring in the pieces. And we're gonna start by adhering the designer paper. And you are gonna probably just be shocked because watch this. 
I know. I'm putting the adhesive on the strawberry side. Isn't that sad? <laughs> and it probably would help if we put our um, Whisper White in the middle here first. Now you don't want to put adhesive all over the back side of the Whisper White because if you um, if you do that and you make a mistake, you can't actually remove it as easily. So we're just going to put a couple little dots of adhesive on there. And we do actually have to put this in here first um, to stamp it because otherwise it's going to move around. There, that's going to be easier. Now let's go ahead and take our other one. I love seeing where everybody's coming from. Thank you. Jeannie from South Carolina. Beaufort. Beaufort? Is that how you say your city's name? <laughs> Probably botched it up. And then Lois from Colorado. I'm so glad that you guys check in and tell me where you're from. It's fun to see where everyone's coming from. All right, so now we have the top and the bottom of our card. It's helpful for you, Deb? Okay, good. Thank you. I asked the question a little earlier if it's helpful to have see the supplies first and then see the measurements. I thought so, so I'm glad. Okay, now we take the um, punches, and we're going to take the two and a quarter inch circle punch first. And we're going to punch our Knight of Navy cardstock. And then we're going to punch our designer paper scrap. I know it's a big scrap, but this way I could choose from any of those strawberries, really. And I like the one that, ha that shows a little bit more garden green. I think we'll come in from the top here. We'll make it right in the center there. So that's why I chose not to use... <laughs> that's a lot of wasted paper. We'll have to make three cards out of that. <laughs> But that's why I chose to have the strawberry side down here because I really wanted these to show off. So then we put some adhesive on the back of that. I love our snail adhesive. It is awesome. Okay, so now we have our little decorative piece. Now before we put that all the way onto our card, we're going to take our stamps. So here's our Knight of Navy ink. And we're going to open it up. Woodstock, Ontario, Alberta, Canada. This is so much fun, you guys. Thanks for saying hi. And there's my friend Sandy. Yay, hi Sandy. <laughs> okay, now before we actually um, st uh, stick our circle down, what I want you to do is stamp. This is the easiest way to get that little message in the pe peekaboo area if it fits. So you stamp beforehand. And I actually want to stamp this so that I'm covering up the to you part with the circle because that way when they open up the card they'll get even a longer message so it will say happy birthday and then on the inside happy birthday to you right how fun is that so got to have some kind of surprise on the inside so we're going to stamp that down about there and then we can take this piece and we want to put adhesive um, just at the top of that circle so you kind of have to eyeball it flip it over stick your adhesive on there and then come back over the top and tack it down like that, okay? But there's more. Let's do some stamping on the inside. Oh, look at that. I love my little graphics, you guys, so I'm gonna throw them in there once in a while <laughs> just for fun, okay? Hey, Donna made it, I'm so glad, yay. And Linda, hi, Linda, you made it. How are you? <laughs> All right, so this is a fun little thing that you can get with inks. You can get more than one shade. So again, beginning stampers, this card is kind of geared towards beginning stampers because it's so easy, but it's also fun for advanced or intermediate stampers too. So we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna stamp off onto our scrap paper to get a lighter colored strawberry. And I know strawberries aren't blue, but I'm making this a monochromatic kind of ink color here. And then we'll take the topper of our strawberry and we'll ink that up. And <laughs> we're gonna stamp that at the top of our strawberry here. I'm laughing because it's just so fun to see everyone's comments and I'm not in the habit of looking up and reading those comments very well. I mean, it's just, it's one of those things that I kind of lack in, but um, every once in a while it's fun to see where everyone's from. And the more comments you do, the more chances you have at getting into the prize run at the end. So it's fun that you're commenting, telling me where you're from. Also give me feedback on the card if you have questions or things like that. Now for this strawberry, we're gonna stamp straight on so um, let's make this one kind of go like that as if it's toppled over. So we're using full color for that. And for the top of our strawberry, we're gonna stamp off and then bring it in. So now we have two shades of navy with only using one stamp pad. Isn't that cute? <laughs> Yay, thanks Harmon, I'm glad you like it. 
All right. Now, is that your last name? Because it says Harmon Debbie. That might be your last name. Maybe your first name's Debbie. Anyways, thank you so much. Okay, so now we have to keep it close. So the little trick for this peekaboo gatefold card that some people aren't showing with their cards is that you can make a little closure on it. You could take a brad and like a little piece of paper that switches, you know, that you can kind of swing over onto the top so it's kind of like a little arm and holds it. Or you can take um, Velcro or a, a magnet, really thin magnets that are made for cards. But um, what I'm gonna use is ribbon. And it's a little bit trickier to do the ribbon. I mean, the other ones are more of a definite kind of hold, but this is a great way to do it um, if you just have ribbon around, right? So, okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna tie a bow. You guys ready for bow tying class here? So you're gonna take your ribbon and you're not gonna have any twists in it. We're just gonna make what I call two rabbit ears. There are no twists in this ribbon, okay? Nothing's twisted around. Then we're gonna take and we're gonna cross them over as if they're just two pieces of ribbon. We're crossing them over each other and we're taking the top one, which is this one in this case, and we're gonna bring it through that hole. And as we pull, you have the perfect little bow. And you can adjust by holding onto the ribbon and um, pulling those things back out to make it a little tighter. You don't wanna get it too tight on this one. You wanna have a nice big base in the middle for your ribbon, uh, for your bow because the bow is the part that holds it down, okay? Thank you, Linda. Um, oh, and the blueberry and the blue strawberries um, don't look tasty. <laughs> well, pretend they're blueberries. I don't know. <laughs> so now the trick is to get our, here they are, glue dots. So we're gonna put our glue dots in a very strategic place. When you put them on, you don't wanna have them towards the top of the backside. You wanna have them towards the bottom. So um, that way they're, they're still keeping that ribbon in place, but I'm putting them towards the bottom. Can you see that? It's, it looks kind of more like it's in the middle when I angle that, but you wanna have them as close to the bottom as possible. And the more um, you put on, the stronger the hold is. So we're gonna put about three of them on, and then we're gonna hold it down. And when we put the ribbon down here, or on the side, or wherever it's gonna be, you wanna make sure that the glue dots are not holding that circle paper down it's just the bow, okay? So you can flip it up and then you can tuck it under again and see if that works. And oops, we probably should have got it a little closer. The one that I showed you earlier when we first started, there we go, see, it works. And then when they get it, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't pop open right away. Happy birthday to you. Um, you can trim up your ribbon to make it cleaner looking. I wanna show you some other samples here too and then I'm gonna walk you through one other one. So trim up your ribbon with ribbon scissors. Thanks, Deborah. <laughs> Deborah Woodby says, my nails match my ribbon. Yeah, I, I needed a summer color, so. Now it's not a guarantee hold, but some ribbons are a little bit stronger than others. This is a very stiff ribbon, so it tends to hold really well. This is one of our celebration ribbons. Here's another uh, version where the ribbon holds really, really well. This is a nice firm ribbon too. And then I'll show you another one at the end with a trick. So let's set these aside for just a minute and I'm gonna bring in another sample to walk you through. Here's one other sample done with the Tutti Frutti. This is using the watermelon paper. <laughs> Thanks, Linda. Um, this is using the watermelon paper and what I did is I did um, one more punch. I used the one and three uh, fourths, one and three quarter inch circle punch to do one more layer. This is actually Calypso Coral. It looks orangey on here but it's it's Calypso Coral. When you put it against red, it's just a vibrating color. It's crazy. And then I took the designer paper, instead of using the flip side of it, I used the same side and I just fussy cut out a couple watermelon pieces. That one's the same sort of thing on the inside. Happy birthday to you. But let's go ahead and stamp one more. And I've got that one almost completely done. I did add some washi tape to this. Here's that coordinating washi tape. I did it beforehand, although what you may want to do is just have your paper tacked down. Remember, we were supposed to come back in here. Hang on a minute. Now you got to pull this out and you got to make sure it's really down in there. But you may want to just kind of tack down your paper um, like I did on the, on the first one with just a couple pieces before you do the washi tape part. Since it's pretty much guaranteed that this is the one I'm going to use, I'm taping it all the way in now. <laughs> If I make a mistake, I'll pull it out later, but hopefully I won't make a mistake. Okay, so there's that. 
and we're going to be using for this card real red and garden green ink uh, let's do the garden green first let's go ahead and stamp this one and we're going to stamp it right in the middle this time that way we don't have to think about where our other circle is going the three circles really do pop don't they Catherine yes um, I agree the more embellishments you have on that front piece the crazier and more fun it gets right so now we have that and then we're going to take these pieces this is the flip side of that one and we're going to put that on top of our red circle this is the two and a quarter inch circle and this is the um i don't know why i did that watch okay i'm just going to put it right there see i didn't have to do that because you can twist it any way you want after you're done i don't know what i was thinking okay so there's our circle and then we can just tape that over the top like this we've got that down let's put our glue dots in there on the ribbon I think I want this side. Stick them down low like that. Again, I like to do three. So, <laughs> thanks, Christy. <laughs> she said it's great. That reminds me of that Frosted Flakes cereal. And then this piece here, we're going to pop up with little mini dimensionals. Those are so much fun. If you have not gotten mini dimensionals, you are missing out because, you know, you can cut a regular dimensional in half. But these little ones, um, less putsy, you get, uh, you get the perfect shape. You don't have to trim it and hope that it fits. So isn't that fun? Just like that. Then we have our red ink to pull in. And we're doing that with the little heart. So there's a heart in this stamp set too, that little heart right there. So we're going to do a few of those because we have to have something peeking through. We're just going to have a few of those kind of peeking out the side because I think personally, I think that this, um, this card, the little raspberries, they look kind of heart shaped next to those leaves that have kind of a, a heart shaped look to them too. So there's our finished card with that one. Very mailable, very festive on the inside with the washi tape. And then let me show you one other card and then I have some news to share with you. Um, this is another card. Now this is done using our, and I'm just going to switch that out there. <laughs> this is done using our new uh, Share What You Love bundle of products that you can now get early. This is not retiring stuff. This is new stuff. These are available to everybody right now too. Um, the, normally the, the new products don't come out until the new catalog is re released on June 1st, but the designer paper, the stamp set, um, let's see what's, yeah, the stamp set. So I use two, pro two of the products that come in the bundle, but you can get the bundle now. And let me share with you that fun paper. And then I'm going to show you a trick that I did with that card. This is that fun paper that you get in that bundle and you actually get like four times this amount, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. You get two times the amount, but four um, pieces of each sheet because you see they're double sided. So you get four of these sheets rather than just two. Oh my gosh, that's taking up the whole screen. Okay, I'm going to set that aside for a minute. Let me show you a trick that I did to stamp this one. So this one here, this little image is actually larger than the peekaboo space. The little Y, if you can see, kind of dips down in there. So if you have an image that's larger, sort of like on, on this one, right? It's larger, takes up too much room to just kind of stamp in the peekaboo spot. What you can do is you can punch out a two and three, I'm sorry, two and a quarter inch circle, and you can use that as a template. So what you do is you, you can put your circle on there already, and then you lift up and away and you know where you can where you can stamp. Now if you're not sure where you can stamp, you can also use that three quarter inch strip that you cut off your original card when you first cut the base. And then when you put this in here like this, you can take and make sure that it's lined up in there. You can see that there, it's, it's kind of got a little space there. Now you can see exactly where it's coming out. So that if you have like a little piece that needs to stamp off the side, but it kind of gives you that direction too, so that you know where to stamp that thank you. 
I hope that tip helps for anybody who wants to use a larger image um, that you can't stamp before you put the circle on, okay? We have prizes. Let me show you those. But I want to talk about bundles here too. Um, I'm bringing this paper back in just for a peek. I am offering product share bundles for lots of the new products in the catalog. So if you are interested, you can go to my blog and I'll show you where that is, where you can find that stuff. Like this is a ribbon share bundle. Um, I'm doing bundles with the papers, the ribbons, and with lots of embellishments and doodads like these fun things. So let me know if you want in on that. Um, Signups are happening right now. Okay, let's talk about the fun prizes. There are two prizes, and this time um, I'm gonna give away some retiring products. So the pool party ribbon, which is the classic weave ribbon. It's that stronger stuff that held this card really well. Um, pool party, the color isn't leaving, but this ribbon is, and the doilies are now sold out. These two are one prize, and then the other prize is this ribbon, which is the garden green that I just used on the card. Um, also leaving, the color isn't, but the, the ribbon is. And your choice of a stamp pad. Now I have to tell you that this stamp pad, Grapefruit Grove, which comes in the Share What You Love bundle, um, at least what the one I bought, um, is available that way. So if you're getting the bundle, you don't want to pick this color. But if you pick this color, I've already opened it up, and the reason why is because I thought I was going to keep it. It's just a flawed one from Stampin' Up. It's actually upside down. The labels are upside down. So if you don't care about that and you want to get um, the Blackberry Bliss pad, <laughs> you can choose that instead of this one. But they're both new colors, new pad styles. So you let me know which one you want if your name is drawn and you, and you want to get in on the stamp pad ribbon bundle rather than the doily ribbon bundle. And both of them will come with one of these cards. So one with this card, one with this card, okay? All right, um, last thing I wanna mention before we draw for prizes is that Stampin' Up! put out a list of retiring products that are now discounted. So if you um, have not finalized all your purchases that you want from retired products, you might wanna download that list or go on the website and check it out because things are discounted. Not all of them, but some of them. Let's click to the computer now. And, oops, did that wrong. There we go. <laughs> and we're gonna go to WooBox. Here we go, WooBox. Let's refresh the posts and let's see what we have for our winners today. Now, if you do not live in the US, um, I can't, uh, like, rule-wise get you a prize, but um, you and I can chat, we'll figure something out. I could at least send you the card, if not anything else, okay? Let's refresh the posts. We have how many comments? 230? Or are there more than that? Keep commenting, you guys. 236? <laughs> All right, I'll refresh it one more time. Get in your last comments so you get a chance in the prizes. And we're going to pick a winner. We'll pick two winners, of course. And then I'm going to talk about next week. All right, 239 comments. Good, three more of you got in on that. Oops, I have to do something first. Hang on. <laughs> there we go. Uh, reacting to the, nope, not reacting, commenting and this, there we go. You can't just smile, you gotta say something. And the first winner is Sandy, Sandy Wiley. And then we have another winner. So Sandy, you get to be the first person who chooses. Yay for you, let's pick that other winner. The second winner is Karen, Karen Bongartz. Congratulations, I'm so glad that you guys were able to uh, get chosen. I think this is first time for both of you. So yay. Yay, yay, yay. Okay. Um, I do want to tell you a couple things. Um, first of all, I want to give you an update about Nick because some of you were in on my last broadcast. You um, might be concerned to know uh, how he's doing. And he went to school today. Today was the first day he went back. So I'm very, very proud of him for, um, you know, continuing to push to, to heal. He broke his knee um, on I want to say April 22nd. I can't remember the date now. It's been a while. Um, but he had surgery on May 1st and he is on the road to healing. It's slow. It's a slow process. But he went off pain meds a couple days ago and now he's just dealing with allergies and he's back at school as of today. So I'm very excited. I can't wait to pick him up and, and see if he still has energy. Hopefully he does. 
Um, so thank you for all your prayers, well wishes, your messages, your texts. Um, some of you have left phone messages. Some of you have sent cards. Thank you so much. And um, let me show you a couple other things on the computer because I want those of you who don't know how to get to retiring products to be able to figure that out. So I'm going to first go to my, um, let's get this out of the way here, my Facebook page. This is the way you see it. There is a Shop Now button up there. And if you click that, if you click the Shop Now button, it'll take you to the online store where you can see all the products. There's categories on the left here. This is the Share What You Love up here. It's also if you click there. Those are the bundles I was talking about with the new products. This is Last Chance Products. These are the ones that are retiring. And if you click on the Last Chance Products and you click on, say, um, let's just choose everything else, um, you can see the pricing is different on some of those things because they are discounted. So there are some discounted products in there that are already indicated in the online store. If you go to my blog um, or my website, I should say it's stampyourartout.com and then you go to the home button and click on blog or if you scroll and you see right here, you can click on my blog. This is a way to get to my blog. But before you actually get there, there's a shop online button that you can click on to get to the store or once you're in the blog, there are um, there is a button on the side here too, shop online. So you can get to the stores that way. And also, I want to let you know that at the end of all of my posts, I do have um, current things going on. So if you scroll all the way to the bottom, you can find those links for retiring products, product shares. Um, this is a deal that's ending tomorrow. So you'll want to go there if you need some information on any of that stuff. Um, you can also subscribe to my YouTube channel, and if you subscribe to my YouTube channel, you will get notices when I post these videos afterwards. You won't see them live, but you'll at least see them afterwards. So hopefully that information helps, because sometimes I don't share all that stuff. I just, I just dive right into um, you know, saying goodbye and seeing you next week and all that, and I, I, do, um, I don't want to you know, take up any more of your time, but sometimes people ask me, well, how do I get to all that stuff? So I wanted to make sure you knew that. Next week, 2 o'clock, I will demonstrate again um, some other paper crafting project. I can't wait to see what it is because I don't know. I just always have these ideas in my head and I never finalize them until like the weekend before. So I'm excited. Thank you for coming um, live with me on Facebook and uh, seeing what I had to share. Um, it was so fun. Lots of you joined in today. Thank you. And we'll see you next week at 2 o'clock Central Time, um, right here, same place on my Stamp Your Art Out with Rachel Facebook page. Thanks, you guys. Bye-bye. <laughs>